On this channel, we drink outstanding wines regardless of their price point. But lately I've been spending a little bit more money than I probably should, and I'm feeling a little bit budget conscious. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing nine of my favorite wines that currently sell for around $25 in the United States. There's going to be a variety of countries and regions represented, but the common denominator is that these wines all offer exceptional quality at this very reasonable price point. There's red, white, and sparkling wines included, and so there should be something for everyone. The first top wine for $25 a bottle comes from iconic Spanish producer La Rioja Alta. La Rioja Alta traces its roots way back to the 1890s. One of the things that I appreciate about La Rioja Alta is that while it still utilizes traditional winemaking methods, it also combines those traditional winemaking methods with state-of-the-art technology and modern winemaking equipment. La Rioja Alta makes red wines based primarily on Tempranillo. It has some of the best fruit sources in all of Rioja. La Rioja Alta controls every aspect of wine production. It even makes its own barrels in-house from American oak that it uses to mature the wines. It racks the wines by candlelight, and it matures those wines for an extended period of time before they're released. I visited La Rioja Alta last summer and tasted with the winemaker, and during that visit I learned an insider's tip that I'm going to be sharing with you now. And that is, while La Rioja Alta often makes Gran Reservas, such as the 904, which sells for around $75 or so per bottle, and also the 890, that sells for more than $200 a bottle, in years when they don't produce those wines, all that fruit gets declassified and goes into the La Rioja Alta Vini Alberti Reserva Tinto. And so that wine from the 2018 vintage is the first top wine for $25 a bottle. 2018 was a challenging vintage in Rioja due to the inclusion of all this top-notch fruit in the Vini Alberde. This is one that punches well above its price point. The last time that La Rioja Alta did something like this, it was the 2013 vintage, and the 2013 Vini Alberde was truly outstanding as well. So you'll definitely want to stock up on this one, as it is definitely an ideal seller defender. Due to the fact that it already has some bottle aging, you can enjoy it immediately, but you can also age it in your cellar without any difficulty for at least another six to seven years or longer. Garnacha haters will also want to stock up on this wine because while La Rioja Alta normally includes some garnacha in this blend, they sold off all their garnacha in 2018. And so this bottling is 100% Tempranillo. The next top wine for $25 a bottle comes from a historic producer that's located in Bordeaux in the Haut Medoc. This particular producer is located fairly close to Chateau Chasplin, which is located to the west of Margaux. This producer was mired in mediocrity for centuries, however, and the wines were relatively uninspiring. That all changed in 2011, however, when this property was acquired by the Barton family. That is the same Barton family that's responsible for Leoville Barton and Langue Barton. Following this acquisition, absolutely everything was overhauled and upgraded, from the chateau, to the winemaking facilities, to the wine cellars, and even the vineyard which had very low planting density because there were a number of rows that had bare patches, and the vines that they did have were producing very high-yielding, low-quality fruit. These improvements began paying dividends with a 2019 vintage, so I would definitely skip everything before 2019, but 2019 and 2020 offer excellent quality for the price, and 2022 also figures to be their best vintage yet so you may want to keep an eye on the futures for the 2022 vintage. While the precise composition of this Bordeaux blend will vary from vintage to vintage, the vineyards are planted to 45% Cabernet Sauvignon, 40% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Franc, and 5% Petit Verdot. This wine spends 12 months maturing in one-third new French oak. The great news about this wine is that it's also a wine that's relatively approachable when it's young. So the 2019 vintage is already ready to enjoy, and my general rule of thumb for this producer would be to enjoy it from 3 to 10 years after the vintage. The next top wine for $25 a bottle comes from A Land Down Under. I'm talking about the 2020 Penfold Shiraz Bin 28. Of course, Shiraz is also known as Syrah in other parts of the world, and I'm a big fan of Syrah. 
This one is a blend of Shiraz or Syrah fruit that comes from a number of different regions in South Australia. Normally I would not recommend a younger vintage of Penfolds because I find that they use a substantial percentage of new oak and it can oftentimes take a number of years for that oak to integrate and for the wines to become enjoyable for my personal preferences. However, this particular wine was impressive because they used only 16% new oak and it matured for only around 12 months in oak. As a result, the surprising purity of fruit for this wine, and it's one that's already quite impressive. This wine is powerful and concentrated, yet it's very well balanced and it has plush tannins. It's been very well received by critics and received at least two 94 point scores, and it's an absolute no brainer at this $25 price point. One of my strategies when ordering wine at lower price points is to choose wine from producers that also make exceptional wine at higher price points. And so it is with this next top wine for $25 a bottle. This wine is produced by well-known producer Ornalaya, which is a top producer of Super Tuscan wines in the Bulgari region. This is the third wine from Ornalaya, and it's called La Volte del Ornalaya. This is a wine that Ornalaya has been producing since 1991, but the quality has been getting progressively higher, and now it's really a very enjoyable wine in its own right. This is a wine that's also made substantial inroads on restaurant wine lists, and so in many instances you can even find it by the glass. This wine is a blend of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and it also includes some Sangiovese, which helps to give it some refreshing acidity. I was fortunate to get the last bottle of the 2015 La Volte del Ornelaya from a restaurant in London a few months ago, and it showed extremely well on a pop and pour and was in an excellent place. The 2020 vintage of this wine is on store shelves now and is highly regarded by critics. It's definitely a very enjoyable wine, but I would definitely give it some air and enjoy it with a meal if you're going to open it in the next year or two. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level 4 diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Muller Catois is one of my favorite German producers. This is a historic family producer that dates way back to the 1740s. It's currently run by the ninth generation. Impressively, despite the fact that Muller Catois has 25 hectares of vines, they have only around 25 employees plus some seasonal workers. Muller Catois embraces traditional winemaking principles. Among other things, this means that they hand harvest and they use very slow, long fermentations for their wines. So the next top wine for $25 a bottle is the 2020 Muller Catois Riesling Trocken. And this is not a sweet wine. Despite the fact that it's Riesling, there's many outstanding dry Rieslings that are being made today, such as this one. You can tell it's dry due to the use of the word Trocken in the name. And in fact, this one has only about 4.4 grams of residual sugar. This is an extremely vibrant, concentrated wine, especially given the fact that it only has around 12.5% alcohol by volume. While it's difficult to find wines that offer a lot of complexity at the $25 price point, this wine is definitely one of them. It's definitely a wine that will continue to improve with age, and if you're going to enjoy it young, I would probably even give it a little bit of a decant. I'm not shy about decanting German Rieslings, especially when they're young. To do that, and to help maintain the proper temperature, what I'll typically do is put the decanter right on a bucket of ice, and that works like a charm. I first discovered the next top wine for $25 a bottle, shortly after I arrived in Buenos Aires, Argentina, a few years ago. At that time, my hotel wasn't ready yet, so I went to the bar to grab a burger and asked the bartender which glass of wine he would recommend to go with it. He recommended the Mendel Malbec, which is from Mendoza, Argentina. I soon discovered that this was an extremely enjoyable wine. It had a very vibrant fruit profile that featured red and black fruits and also some intriguing violet aromatics. They picked this wine a little bit early, so it also has surprising freshness. This wine actually is produced from vines that were planted way back in the 1920s. It's a consistently excellent wine year in and year out. Even in the more challenging 2020 vintage, it was well received by critics. This wine also features impressive purity of fruit, as it only matures in oak for one year, and only one third of that oak is new. 
It's definitely a wine that you can enjoy right on release, but it will certainly age and be enjoyable for a few years as well. The next top wine for $25 a bottle comes from Franzac, which is an excellent source of value in Bordeaux. I'm talking about the 2019 Chateau Fontenier. This producer is owned by famed winemaking consultant Michel Roland and also Danny Roland. Fontenil has 11 hectares of vineyards that average an impressive 45 years of age. These vineyards are ideally situated at the highest elevation in Franzac on a plateau with clay and limestone soils and south-facing aspects. This wine is 100% Merlot. The 2019 is an exceptional effort for this particular wine, although 2020 and now 2022 may be even better. So definitely keep an eye out for all three of those vintages. This is a wine that's fruit forward and approachable when it's young, but it should age with no problem for 10 to 15 years. This is a wine that was definitely well received by critics and is one that I highly recommend at the $25 price point. Michele Chiarlo is an excellent Italian producer with a number of high quality fruit sources. I particularly enjoy this producer's Barolo and Barbaresco, but they also make a stellar Barbera. Barbera is very underrated in my view, and you may be surprised to learn that they actually produce three times more Barbera than Nebbiolo in the Piedmont region. If you're unfamiliar with Barbera, one of the things that I like about it is it's extremely high in acidity, but it also has very low tannins. And one of the problems with red Italian wines, especially when they're young, is that they're often so structured in tannic that they need substantial aging before they can be enjoyable. But with Barbera, that's not the case. And so this is definitely an excellent choice if you're at a restaurant and you don't have time for a more structured red wine to open up. This is one that I often enjoy with pizza, for example, and it pairs perfectly with that. Accordingly, the next top wine for $25 a bottle is the Michele Chiarlo Nizza DOCG Cipresse Barbera. One of the very best places in Piedmont to produce high quality Barbera is Nizza. Nizza was recently recognized for its high quality and now has DOCG status. Among other things, that means that if you see Nizza DOCG on the label of Barbera, that the producer will have had to limit yields, which will help to ensure that the wine has adequate concentration and is not thin. And it also means that the wine had to mature for at least 18 months before it was released, six of which had to be in oak. Unfortunately, champagne prices have been skyrocketing the past few years. And so while I'm a big fan of champagne and enjoy it regularly, I'm also looking around for some other alternatives that offer some excellent value for the price. One of the alternate regions that I've been experimenting with is Tasmania, Australia. Tasmania has the potential to make excellent sparkling wine, at least in part because it has some cooler climate areas, which will help to preserve the acidity and the freshness in the sparkling wines. While there are many excellent examples of Tasmanian sparkling wine, unfortunately our Australian friends don't seem too excited to ship them worldwide and instead seem to be content to enjoy them for themselves. Fortunately, however, there is at least one example of Tasmanian sparkling wine that you should be able to get pretty much regardless of where you live, and that is the Jan's Premium Cuvée. This is a multi-vintage sparkling wine from one of the most well-known producers of Tasmanian sparkling wine. The Jans Premium Cuvée is a blend of Champagne's three most classic varieties, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Meunier. This wine spends 18 months on the lees before it's released. Flavors and aromas include apple, pear, and lemon, and there's some brioche characteristics due to the 18 months of lees aging. I recently saw this wine selling for as little as $22 a bottle so certainly worth taking a chance on at that price. If you're interested in more top wines at price points ranging from $15 to $100 a bottle, be sure to check out my playlist in the pinned comment below.